Phantom Thread is a romantic period drama and the latest film from director Paul Thomas Anderson. Starring Daniel Day-Lewis, Vicky Creeps and Leslie Manville, the film tells the story of a dressmaker in 1950s London and the relationship that he has with a woman he meets called Alma. And this guy, Reynolds, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, he's this perfectionist, he's obsessed with his craft. He struggles to forge any kind of meaningful romantic relationships with a partner because he's just so obsessed and so much into his work. But then he meets Alma and the film basically revolves around the relationship between Reynolds and Alma. Will they end up together? Will he be too much for her? Will she be the right fit for him as well? And I don't want to go too much more into the plot than that because I, there's, it just takes some twists and turns along the way and there are some surprises, some things that happen that I didn't expect or I didn't see coming. So I don't want to go too much more into the plot than that. But yeah, it basically revolves around the relationship between Reynolds, played by Jenny Dillerys, and Alma, played by Vicky Creeps and the relationship that those two characters have in this movie as we follow them on this journey. And going into some, I was looking forward to it, mainly just because it's, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson directing and it's Daniel Day-Lewis starring. It could have been about anything and I would have seen it. You know, because I don't typically go and see films that are like period dramas about a dressmaker in 1950s London. <laughs> Not really. But you tell me it's directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and you tell me it's starring Daniel Day-Lewis in quite possibly his final role on the film. I'm like, well... <laughs> I'm obviously going to see that. And it gets nominated for several kind of Oscars across the board, including Best Film, Director, Actor, Supporting Actress. I had to go and see it just because of the cast and crew alone. And coming out, I actually liked this movie a whole lot more than I thought it was going to do. And I didn't think it was going to be a bad film. I just didn't think it was going to be my kind of film. I didn't think it was going to be the kind of film that I would really like. But it really surprised me in that I actually really loved this film. One of the things I liked most about it was that it really felt like a kind of throwback to the classic films of the 50s. It very much felt like a classic Hitchcock film from the 50s. A lot of people have been talking about how it has the kind of shades of Hitchcock's Rebecca in there. And it definitely does. It's not exactly the same as Rebecca, but there's definitely a kind of echoes of Hitchcock's Rebecca in this and it, like I said it very much felt like I was watching a classic film from the 50s obviously it's set in 1950s London but just watching the movie it was just such a breath of fresh air and that so many films come out nowadays and even films that are quite different from one another but so many films nowadays often kind of feel the same all modern films kind of feel the same really but this was such a breath of fresh air and it was just so refreshingly old-fashioned it very much felt like I'd gone back in time 50 60 years and was watching a classic film from the 50s and I loved it because of that the direction by Paul Thomas Anderson was absolute perfection um, I'm not surprised that this film has got nominations as far as best film best director is concerned because it was just so meticulously directed Everything was like there by design. There was not one thing that was out of place. I just loved how this film looked. It was just so irresistibly ravishing, irresistibly seductive. It sounds like a weird kind of thing to say, but it was just such a delicious film just to look at. It was a feast for the eye, and I just couldn't help myself getting sucked into this movie, and it really caught me off guard in that respect, because like I said at the beginning, I didn't think this was going to be my kind of film. I didn't think this was going to be a film that I would really love and really gravitate towards but from the get-go and throughout the runtime of this movie I was just so sucked in I was just so drawn in and captivated by this film it was so quietly captivating it's one of those films that's quite subtle and understated but so incredibly captivating as well and it really just draws you in and you just can't help but get invested in this film and I was worried this was gonna be one of those films where maybe it starts off strong but over time it starts to lose you and you start to lose a bit of interest you know it starts to drag or starts to get a little boring but that never happened, at least not for me anyway. I was constantly interested and just consistently invested throughout the whole runtime of this movie. And I just couldn't help myself from getting sucked into this film. I just found it to be such a kind of captivating, mesmerising experience watching this movie. And I really kind of wanted to go back and see it a second time. Because on the surface level, you could say, oh, there was not much there, not much going on. But there was just so much going on beneath the surface. And it was such a densely tight-packed film. So many little details, so many fine details that you could miss the first time around. So I just kind of wait to go back and watch this a second time around because I'm sure there's going to be so many little things and so many little kind of finer details that I might have missed the first time around that will be really rewarding on a second watch. I really feel like, obviously I can't say this for certain, but I really feel like it's going to be a film that's really rewarding on multiple watches, a film that you can go back and watch over and over again and get new and different things from it each time. And those are my favourite kind of films. I really feel like this is going to be a film that's going to stick with me. That I can't stop thinking about and I'm going to want to go back and watch over and over again. But of course, I can't do a review of this film and not talk about the performances. And it's kind of beating a dead horse at this point to say that Daniel Day-Lewis is a great actor. I mean, what is there to say about Daniel Day-Lewis that hasn't been said already? He's like the greatest actor alive? 
pretty much. I mean, a lot of people say he's like the, the best actor working today and the best actor maybe of all time. And I can't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, I remember when I saw him in Lincoln back in 2012, it was such an incredible transformative performance. He literally became Abraham Lincoln. And that's the thing about Daniel Day-Lewis. It's not like watching somebody acting. It's like he just turns himself into a different person. It is just truly incredible. And he does the same thing in this film with this 1950s dressmaker. It's hard to go into that spoiling things. I don't want to go into specifics or plot points or details, but I just love his performance as that character and his relationship with Vicky Creeps as Alma. It was really great. I wasn't expecting it to be the kind of thing that I'd be able to gravitate towards, but it was just done so well and it was a really great, like I said, kind of classic, old-fashioned kind of romantic drama and it did get quite dark and twisted at times. You know, it wasn't some cliche, stereotypical love story or anything. It was more mature. It was more sophisticated. It did go to this kind of dark and kind of twisted kind of uh, directions that I wasn't expecting where these characters both become quite warped, you know, mentally and psychologically where... We don't know if they're going to be fit to one another. We don't know if, it, you know, the Reynolds is going to be too much for Alma. We don't know if Alma is necessarily going to, you know, be the right fit for him. We don't know necessarily if Reynolds is using Alma or whether he actually genuinely loves her. Like, there's, it starts off at the beginning of the movie and we genuinely think they have fallen in love and then something happens and we're like, hang on a minute, is he just using her? Does he genuinely like her or is he just using her for his work? And then if something happens later on in the movie where we're like, maybe Alma's doing the same thing back to him now. Maybe, he, you know, he's getting a taste of his own medicine. Maybe, like, she is, like, you know, giving as good as she gets. And it's a really great, really kind of fascinating back and forth kind of psychological almost kind of romantic drama that's got shades of Hitchcock's Rebecca in there. Very much feels like a classic 50s film this and I also have to mention Leslie Manville and as great as Vicky Creeps was as Alma Leslie Manville was terrific in this movie and she really was the definition of best supporting actress she was really great and she's not in the movie as much as say Daniel Day-Lewis and Vicky Creeps it's really their film and you know Vicky Creeps is almost in the movie as much as Daniel Day-Lewis it's almost as much her film as it is Daniel Day-Lewis's but even though Leslie Manville doesn't have as big as a role Every time she comes on screen, she has such a presence that she brings over and she makes such an impact every time she comes on screen. And just the back and forth between her and Reynolds, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, was so great. He's this very kind of tricky character to deal with, but she is like the one person who will not take any shit from him. And he's she's like the one person who can put him in his place. And she's like the one person he cannot tear down. Like, she will just throw it back at him and she will not tolerate it and just she will not take any shit from him and she was so great and I'm so glad she's got nominated for Best Supporting Actress because she was really great in the movie the score as well by Johnny Greenwood last thing I have to mention here the score is incredible the music really is like a character in its own right it's just constantly there from beginning to end and I'll not be surprised if this nabs the Oscar for score I'm still rooting for The Shape of Water also Dunkirk might get it as well but the score in this movie is really great. What I'll say overall is that this isn't going to be a film for everyone. Like I said, it does very much feel like a throwback to kind of classic films of the 50s. It very much reminded me of a, of a Hitchcock film like Rebecca or Vertigo, for instance. And I love those kind of films. I really wasn't expecting it to be the kind of film that I would really love. But what I'll say is that if you love classic films, if you love like Hitchcock films, if you love good old fashioned period romantic dramas that are just phenomenally directed incredibly well acted and just meticulously designed from top to bottom i'm sure you'll absolutely love this film i just found it just so irresistibly ravishing i was just drawn in captivated from beginning to end and i just absolutely adore this film and i cannot wait to go back and see it a second time i definitely recommend seeing phantom fred if it sounds like the kind of film that you'd really like i don't think it's going to be for everyone but if you like classic good old-fashioned romantic period dramas i'm sure you'll absolutely love this film so overall i'm gonna give phantom bread five stars there we have it that wraps up my review of phantom bread have you seen the film yet and if so what do you think about it let me know in the comments down below and as always if you like this and you haven't already be sure to click subscribe to see more if you missed my last review be sure to go and click over here to catch up my last review or perhaps down here to catch up on all my <coughs> or perhaps down here to catch up on all my recent videos but with that said i've been david o'sullivan i'll see you next time